And good morning everybody and welcome to our church at home service for the Newry Parish Churches of St Patrick's and St Mary's. You actually join me here strangely on the east coast of England and our Rector Scott is also over in England as well. It's been a strange couple of weeks for us as a staff. Um, Last week, I found out that my fiance's dad had passed away really suddenly. So me and my fiance, we had to jump on a f the first ferry across and drive down to Norfolk. And then this week, Scott's mother sadly passed away as well. But we still wanted to, to meet together virtually online before Easter Sunday next week, just to, to bless you, to encourage you, and to see what God wants to say to us as a group of parishes. And, and while it's been a really sad time, we've really sensed God still continue to work. And we know that he's preparing us for something special that he wants to do in Newry. And these verses in 2 Corinthians 4 have been a real comfort to me this last while. It says, Yet we who have the spiritual treasure are like common clay pots, in order to show that the supreme power belongs to God, not to us. We are often troubled but not crushed, sometimes in doubt but never in despair. There are many enemies but we are never without a friend, and though badly hurt at times, we are not destroyed. We pray this service, even though it's from a, a different part of, of the UK, we pray that it is a blessing and an encouragement to you. So let's get our hearts ready to worship, and I'm going to pass on to the worship team now. On this Palm Sunday, Things again are different. No children waving palm branches in processions. No collective singing of hosannas. No exulting crowds, here or anywhere. The streets are quiet. What resonates is the image of you, Jesus, weeping over Jerusalem, crying for a people surrounded by enemies who do not know the things that make for peace. Our tiny enemy is invisible to the naked eye. We still jump when people cough. We sometimes eye each other suspiciously, not knowing where the danger is lurking. We still fear for all the vulnerable, and we fear for ourselves. As our lives are overturned and restrictions continue, it's not business as usual, and economic worries are added into the mix. Anxiety settles like a dense cloud over all the world. We need you now more than ever, Jesus. You arrive humbly, unnoticed by many, cheered by some. You arrive in the early morning cars of health workers showing up for their shifts. You arrive in 18 wheels as lorry drivers unload groceries and essential supplies. You arrive as scientists head to their labs day in and day out, continuing to work diligently on the virus's vaccine. You arrive on foot as neighbours deliver meals to others stranded at home. You arrive in the ricochet of signals of satellites, as cyberspace messages of love circle our globe. Millions reaching out to say, Are you okay? I miss you, and I can't wait to see you again soon. God, hear our prayer. From the lonesome valleys of this worldwide pandemic, Open our hearts to the possibility that today is the day of our visitation. You walk triumphantly through closed doors, meeting us when others cannot come in. Accept our solitary hosannas and gather us together in prayer. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen.
first Bible reading is taken from Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. The second Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 14, verses 1 to 15. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany, reclining at the table in the home of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, Why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor and they rebuked her harshly. Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them any time you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for my burial. Truly I tell you, Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room, upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. This is the word of the Lord. On Tuesday this week, we marked one year since the first lockdown started. And it has been a strange time. This brought in a season of hand sanitising, of social distancing, of, of being in lockdown away from friends and from family. But there's also been glimmers of hope as we've celebrated the NHS heroes and even Sir Captain Tom. But I wonder if you're like me, where recently when it was announced we were given some dates and some hope of lockdown finally finishing with the vaccination starting, you started to dream of your freedom. You started to dream of holidays. And then you've thought, well, well now, the, now they're, they're cancelling holidays again. What are we going to do? It just seems like such a frustrating time of waiting until this ends. Well, when we think of Palm Sunday, we think of Jesus riding into Jerusalem and fulfilling a prophecy that the people had waited for for 500 years, over 500 years. But as he rode in to Jerusalem that day on the donkey, a glimmer of hope started. People started to get hopeful again. They started to, to celebrate that the Messiah was coming. So Matthew 21 verses 1 to 11 say, 
As Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives. There Jesus sent two of the disciples on ahead with these instructions. Go to the village there ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied up with a colt beside her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything, tell him, the master needs them, and then he will let them go at once. This happened in order to make what the prophet had said come true. Tell the city of Zion, look, your king is coming to you. He is humble and rides on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did what Jesus had told them to do. They brought the donkey and the colt, threw their cloaks around over them, and Jesus got on. A large crowd of people spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds walking in front of Jesus and those walking behind began to shout, Praise the David's son! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! Praise God! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was thrown into an uproar. Who is he? The people asked. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The crowds answered. Messiah means the anointed one. And high priests and kings back then would have been anointed with oil to show that they had been chosen by God. Now, the Romans ruled the land at the time, and that meant the Jews expected a Messiah who would come and free them from that rule. Others expected a prophet like Moses. And this is why Jesus wanted his, his identity as the Messiah kept secret. Because if word got out that he was going around talking about being the Messiah, then the Romans might have arrested him as a revolutionary and he wouldn't have got to complete his work. But we know that Jesus came to serve. He wasn't this warrior king that they expected. He was a humble king. And he rode in that day on that donkey as a symbol that he was a humble king. Now, because of these expectations of a certain kind of Messiah, that meant that some people missed out on recognizing Jesus when he came in to Jerusalem that day. So when he finally came in on Palm Sunday, they, they didn't recognize him as the Messiah. They, they had just built up these expectations and then they missed out. We can see in Zechariah 9 verse 9 that it says that he will come in as a humble king, but, but the expectations had overclouded that. The, the Jewish people had this history of demanding a certain kind of king. If you go back to 1 Samuel 8, we see that the, that the Israelites demanded a king. They weren't satisfied with the judges and they didn't trust that, that, that they were doing a good enough job. And when they looked around at different countries, they saw that they were ruled by kings. So the Israelites thought, well, well we want the king. So God allows Samuel to anoint Saul as the first king of Israel. But we know that he then rejects God and we see a long line of kings who reject God. So there's two things I see here that are traps that we can fall into as well. And they are unhealthy expectation and unhelpful comparison. We can crush people by our expectations and comparison sometimes and, and it can end up making us bitter and cynical. Jesus, however, is never crushed by our expectations. Jesus wasn't necessarily the king the Jews wanted, but he was the king they needed and the king that we need as well. He came to die for our sins, to take the punishment that we deserved upon him. And this Palm Sunday procession, when he came in for that triumphant entry, was the start of the Passion Week, when Jesus would eventually go on to die on the cross. So while we give thanks for Jesus this Easter, let's not be shy about what he has done in our lives. In Luke's account of Palm Sunday in chapter 19, verse 39, it says, Then some of the Pharisees in the crowd spoke to Jesus. Teacher, they said, command your disciples to be quiet. Jesus answers in verse 40, I tell you that if they keep quiet, the stones themselves will start shouting. Now, I don't want any stones to be doing any shouting for me. And I want to make sure that my prayer, my praise is loud and proud as I remember what Jesus did for me on the cross. And this week, as we come into Passion Week, let's think about these different events that led up right up to Good Friday and then Easter Sunday. We are so excited to get back into the building in person so that we can worship together. It's been such a long time that we've been away from each other. But let's come back full of expectation, trusting that God has something special for us in these days ahead. 
So this Easter, let's reflect on what unhealthy expectations and unhelpful comparison might be holding us back as individuals, whether it's with our walk with God or with our neighbour, with family, with loved ones after a really long year. And let's think about the Jews that day, 500 years of waiting, what relief must have been for so many of them when they saw Jesus riding on that donkey to, to fulfil the prophecy in Zechariah 9, 9. And let's lay down our palm branches and our garments of praise as we prepare the way for the coming King, as we worship together next Sunday for Easter Sunday and the weeks after that where we think that Jesus has something special for the people of St. Patrick's and St. Mary's but also for the people of Newry and how he's going to fulfill that plan through us, how we get to be partners and co-workers with Christ, the Christ who, who died for us and rose again. Thank you, God, for your triumphal entry into our world each and every day. The slow motion explosion of buds in the trees proclaim Hosanna. Rushing water falling from heaven, flowing to the sea, proclaims Hosanna. The fragrance of spring in the morning air proclaims Hosanna. And the beauty of a baby's fingers, the softness of their cheek, proclaims your praise. We ask you today, God, to help us to see the beauty in the everyday and to continue to appreciate the little things in life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks and praise for who you are, for all you have created, all you are creating. Thank you for sending Jesus, who showed us your love for all creation, your love for us. He opened our eyes to see your kingdom come here on earth. Forgive us for the times where we have gone about our own business, concerned with many things, oblivious to the needs of those around us, oblivious to the call of your love in our heart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, equip us to be your servants, listening, eager, ready. Thank you for your presence in our world, even in war-filled places. We hear of bombs dropped, children killed, the needy betrayed. We are tempted to despair and to think that you have forsaken us. We are tempted to think that you are powerless. Give us a vision of your entry into our world as the Prince of Peace. Changing hearts, changing our hearts one by one. Creating an army of peacemakers who say no to violence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of great deeds, open our hearts to be your hearts our hands to be your hands, our arms to be your loving arms for all who need your presence. You know the people in our congregation with pressing needs, those with new diagnoses, those waiting for tests, those with chronic pain. We grieve with those here who are grieving and we ask for your comfort and healing. God, please walk with us and show us the way. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of Christ. Amen.
So thank you so much for joining us for this very different and now wet church at home online. I have um, loved getting to film over in Norfolk and even though this has been really hard times, we're really thankful for the prayer support of the people around us. Please remember my fiance Amelia and her family as they mourn the loss of her dad. Uh, please keep um, Scott, our rector, and Pauline in your prayers as they mourn the loss of Scott's mum. We are so excited to see you next week in person at St Mary's at 10 a.m. and St Patrick's at 11.30 a.m. as we celebrate the death and the resurrection of Jesus as he came to conquer death for us, for our sins. So I'm just going to close with the very last collect for Palm Sunday and we really hope to see you next week in person. God of all, you gave your only begotten son to take the form of a servant and to be obedient even to death on a cross. Give us the same mind that was in Christ Jesus, that sharing in his humility, we may come to be with him in his glory, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We really hope you have a blessed week and we can't wait to see you in person. God bless.